In this video, another long-held dream has been achieved. I'm finally putting a Mark I Seat Ibiza through its paces. The styling by Giorgetto Giugiaro, I think is just absolutely delicious. We've got a very interesting mechanical package as well in the interior. You have to see it to believe it. So um, let's take a look around this beautiful little motor car. So Seat is a Spanish manufacturer. It began by building Fiat's under license. Uh, although it would often develop them their own way. Uh, so they did four-door versions of cars that Fiat didn't make. Uh, the uh, Seat 600, I think, developed a four-door version, and so did the little 850 Saloon. But by uh, the late 1970s, Fiat was starting to tire of this relationship, and Seat had ambitions. The license agreement limited Seat to just selling cars in Spain. Pretty much they wanted to be an exporter as well. And so Seat started to go its own way by developing the Ibiza here. It was launched in 1984 and the styling by Giugetto Giugiaro was kind of, it's kind of some of his themes for what he wanted the Volkswagen Golf to be. It said this was kind of based around a facelift for the Mark I Golf, which of course he styled, but uh, some lovely Giugiaro touches the lamps. They're almost like a Rubik's Cube sort of a vibe going on. We've got the angled rear wiper of which he was so fond and which featured so heavily on the Mark I Golf. And it, yeah, it's just a really, really nice package. A hatchback as well. We'll just have a peek in the boot while we're here. And look at the depth there. You can hide an entire baby seat in the boot uh, quite easily. And is there a spare wheel under here? No, it must be underslung, or is it under, no, I think it might be in the engine bay, thinking about it. We've literally just got our hands on this car. Lovely bit of Spanish there, Negro for the color, which is black, code 041. Lovely, this car particularly nice. It's got uh, 33,000 miles on the clock from new. And uh, yeah, a lovely thing indeed. So preceding the Seat Ibiza was the Ronda, which really was, a very mildly restyled Ritmo or Strada. Uh, it ended up in the course of arbitration because Fiat said, well, this is our design. What are you doing? And uh, Seat managed to argue that so much of it was not Fiat, but uh, it didn't matter. So under the bonnet, we find this little engine. Uh, previous Seat had used uh, Fiat running gear, but this is the famous system Porsche engine uh, developed obviously with the assistance of Porsche and license for them to use the name. I believe they had a hand in the gearbox as well because uh, for those who don't know Porsche is far from just um, a sports car manufacturer it is an engineering consultancy it's done things like the rear seats in a Vauxhall Zafira that slide into the floor and uh, transmissions and gearboxes very much their thing. And through their close relationship with Volkswagen, obviously front wheel drive was something the Porsche engineers had probably worked on in their time. But yes, indeed, the spare wheel is located under here. So this is the 1.2 uh, version. There was also a 1.5, later a 1.7, or the base models used Fiat's old overhead valve 903cc engine which um, yeah, kept the poverty model and was later a diesel as well. I forget which company made that. Uh, when these cars were developed, Volkswagen was starting to take an interest in Seat, but it was some years, I think 1986 is when Volkswagen started to buy big chunks of Seat and obviously now Seat is part of the Volkswagen group. But yeah, it looks nice and easy to work on. Similar to Volkswagen, we've got uh, the distributor drive right on the end of the overhead camshaft. Uh, rubber timing belt. So um, while it looks a bit Volkswagen-ish in places, I'm told it is very different to an actual Volkswagen engine. Just see the linkage here, uh, just squeezing in over the top of the spare wheel for the single windscreen wiper. Moving inside. And as you can see, it's quite surprising for what, what is um, effectively a new brand trying to make its way in the world. This is bonkers. The switch gear all over the place. Indicators are on this little rocker here. So they fall nice in the hand. Got a horn there. Oh, there we go. And uh, heated rear window, fog light, um, side lights there. But then we've also got light switches over here as well. 
Um, I don't know what that one does. Is that your main beam? Yeah, so that's your main beam on and off. We've got the wiper controls. And then the um, rear wiper, I presume, as well. So fascinating. Lovely clear dials, though. Uh, rev counter, sporty. Uh, got hazard lights up here. Oh, very muted. Very muted indicator noise. And, uh, yeah, I really like it. I like the heater controls as well. Nice and clear, but just a bit different. No guarantee can be given on auto audio equipment. I think that's because um, it came with a D Lafitte radio, perhaps. We've got a manual choke, but a digital clock. We've got a tiny little glove box over here that I'm frankly a bit scared to open, but there we go. It sort of hangs down on these little straps and looks moderately flimsy. We've got winding windows in this one, but good gearing. That's quite nice. Remote control uh, mirror adjustment, a tilting sunroof. Very fancy. The interior light is here on a bit of an angle. Uh, this one appears to have um, LEDs in it by the look of it. And then we've got a five-speed gearbox as well. So uh, all mod cons in a way. But uh, you probably want to um, know what it sounds like. So let's start her up. There we go. Uh, carburetor. So you've got the um, usual vagaries of a 1980s carburetor. Uh, I don't know how to wash the windscreen. How do you do that? Is that... Oh, like that. Oh, you push the whole thing in. And then, there we go, single wiper, giving single wiper problems of mushing the water over here, which then blows up the windscreen again, just like a Citroen BX, and uh, a bit of a corner of disappointment right in front of the driver. I'm not a fan of single wipers myself, and uh, that that is kind of why. That is just an unnecessarily unswept area. But we'll forgive Jujaro because he also designed the second generation of Bifa, which looked completely different and had two windscreen wipers that gave excellent coverage, as I recall. We should get belted in and go for a drive. There we go. She likes the revs. And off we go. Steering wheel a little off center, we'll forgive it that. So she's about 37 years old, we can forgive her one or two foibles. Need a rather firm hand with a gear lever, but it's nice and precise, at least. Steering unassisted, so um, kind of typical of uh, unassisted racks of this time. It isn't the most direct, but uh, they have to gear it down to make sure you can actually turn the steering wheel. But yeah, I love this layout with a switch gear. It takes some memorizing to work out where it all goes. But by um, 1990, Volkswagen really was calling the shots and forced a restyle of the interior with stalks that would be familiar to anyone who's owned a Mark II Golf or a Volkswagen Polo of that era. Very familiar stalks. Yeah, it feels pretty good. It's not an amazing car, but uh, it rides well enough. There's not too many trim rattles in here. Perhaps a little crashy in places, but uh, it, you wouldn't call it unpleasant. Dare I say it, I think it rides a bit better than a Mark II Golf. Oh, I am getting shot in the comment section. I think she's 34. Oh, 34. Because Giselle's 37. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been the 1.2. I forget what the power output is. I'll put that here somewhere. But, uh... Yeah, it's, it's not a, exactly a ball of fire. I imagine the 1.5 is quite entertaining though. And the 1.5 has the advantage, it would count for cheaper road tax in the UK than an equivalent 1.6. Yeah, it's a little noisy, a little bit of road noise coming through perhaps, but uh, this is a, a very likeable car, I think. I know I say that about everything, but maybe it's true. So coughing and spluttering a little bit at lower revs. But like I say, 33,000 miles on the clock. I imagine some of the rubber in the carburetor is, um, yeah, not in perfect condition. But yeah, I can see exactly why this switch gear, even though it's super convenient. The great British public aren't fans of um, weird switch gear, which is why the Citroen BX went from a really off the wall dash layout to very sensible. Quite a vocal little engine, I'm going to say.
Yeah, those noise levels, I'd say, are bordering on unacceptable for a car of this class. But uh, nonetheless, there's got to be some compromise somewhere, I guess. These were relatively cheap for the time. But it was always the styling that uh, I loved with these cars. I think it's one of Giugiaro's best. It's really sharp um, looks that um, you can see even in the 1970s concept cars. There's lots of elements that you can see on this car. But the Ibiza was joined by a sister car, the Malaga. Um, thought to possibly be extinct in the UK now. Uh, I saw one in the Netherlands. I think I've seen the same one twice um, at a Japan Classic Sunday show. But uh, exceedingly rare, the Malaga. Even though that had two windscreen wipers. But yeah, other than the vocal engine, when you start extending it, it's um, a very pleasant car to drive. I think it compares very favourably with its many rivals. This was at a time, the late 1980s, when um, cheaper cars were starting to become really quite good. I was a Skoda Favorite is another one. Skoda Favorite also had a transmission developed with a, the help of Porsche. And suddenly, you know, crap cars were starting to become really rather competent. Well, there we have it. I think one of the most interesting bits of car design of the 1980s, very, very 1980s, I just love it. There's some, just some lovely shapes. Um, a brilliant example of Giugiaro's work. And a very important point for Seat as well, as it marked the transition away from the Fiat era into what was to become the Volkswagen era. But this was a time when Seat still had independence and was clearly enjoying it as well. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can head to the Hubnut store if you would like to support what we do. And we'll see you in a future video. Farewell. Say it.